Let's get back on it. Are you guys, are you guys excited to be here? Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to be here. I, I love you guys. Um, you guys truly do matter to me. Um, I really do believe that every single one of you, God has incredible plans uh, for you. But can we just talk about this egg for a second? You know what I'm talking about? The egg? You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's a nice egg. Check out its curves. <laughs> I mean, this blew up the internet. If you don't know what this is, I, then you don't have Instagram or you live under a rock. I don't know which one it is. But hey, this is the world record egg. Those of you that have Instagram but have not liked this yet, raise your hand. Okay, okay, okay. This is the world record egg. Let me introduce you. She's a pretty one. She has not hatched yet. Um, I'm excited for her to hatch. I don't know if we get to see that. But this egg has the world record in likes. It is beating out Kaylee Jenner, or Kylie Jenner, is whatever, however you say her name, I don't, whatever. Um, it's beating her 18 million. Um, and this has got 50 million likes. Over 50 million likes. Who in this room has liked it? Okay, so you can join the movement um, when after afterwards. Don't do it right now. Hey, is it just just a question? Is Instagram been broke for you guys today? Okay, it's not just me and Josh. We were like really concerned, but that's good. Hey, God's given us a Sabbath. That's good. We're resting from Instagram today. Um, time to get on Facebook. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't go there. Anyways, so this egg, like, I got to ask some questions. I got to ask some questions. Like, why? How? And what? Like, why in the world did this egg blow up overnight? Like, I, why? Why did it blow up overnight? And then, and then how in the world did an egg become so popular? Can I just tell you that this Instagram popped up one day. It got 8,000 likes in one day. I'm convinced they bought likes. Like, I am convinced they had to have bought likes at least a thousand or so to get, their, to get the ball rolling. But like, they're at 50 million, over 50 million likes right now. That's a lot of people. I read something where that's like more people in, Can like, there's not that many people in Canada. It's crazy. If there was a community, if there was a city, it would be packed. 50 million people. But how? And then, and then like, what drove over 50 million people to join the movement. Like what drove them to join this community where we're liking an egg on social media? I mean, if you really think about it, it's ridiculous. And I started thinking about it this week and I, and I started answering this question, okay, why? Well, they had a purpose. They had a clear purpose. There was a purpose that they had and it was clearly stated in the bio of the Instagram. It was clearly stated in the comment. We want to beat Kylie Jenner's post. We want the world record. This is going to be the world record egg. They had a purpose. So how? How did they reach that purpose? Well, abracadabra, uh, abracadabra, people invited others. Whoa, that's crazy. Huh. Makes sense, right? It's not, I'm not Copernicus or anything, but like people invited others, whether that was through DMing, whether that was through face-to-face -face conversation, but it was just like, hey, have you seen this egg? Who was invited into the egg process? I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I wouldn't have known about it unless Josh Hansen didn't invite me face-to-face -to, -face to this community, right? But what drove over 50 million people to like this egg? And I think what it was is, is that people want to belong to something. People want to be a part of something. People want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And that's what this little tiny egg does. Even though we're bigger than the egg, we got to be part of a movement. And every single person that raised their hand and said, I like that, you are part of the world record breaking um, egg. Like, you are part of that community now, which is pretty incredible. But I want us to remember these things as we talk about um, God's word tonight, as we talk about community tonight. And I want us to remember why, how, and what this e how this egg just got so popular. What drove 50 million people, okay? So keep this in the back of your head. But I'm just like, I'm still baffled by it. And it's, it just doesn't make sense to me that an egg could do this. 
that could create community. And something that I want to make very clear tonight is that the digital world is great because you can have interactions and whatnot. But once you've liked that egg, what happens next? I looked at their, 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 their like feed and there was only a few pictures and there was like, this is lame now. Like there's nothing past it. There's no growth. If I've liked the egg, that's cool. There's no accountability. There's not, that, there's not like a true community that's face to face, right? There's not conversations taking place. Although there's comments, there's not conversation. And there's not godly conversation happening around this egg besides tonight, which is really funny that it's happening now. But I just think that's so interesting. There's, yes, there's comments, but there's no conversation. Did you know there's three million comments on that right now? Three million comments. But there's not that many replies. There's not that many like conversations that are happening amongst it, which I think is pretty interesting. So like, why have we bought into this egg? How have we as a society of mankind bought into this little tiny egg that blew up on the internet? Well, we desire community. God designed us for community. God desires us to be in community with one another. The problem is, is that sin has kind of skewed our view of community. And digital, the, the digital world has kind of skewed our view on community. A lot of times I feel like we can be so alone among so many people because we're doing this constantly. I've seen families at restaurants all on their phones. I've seen people hanging out, sitting on couches when you could have been interacting, but instead, I see that all the time. And I fall guilty of that too. Like, I do the same thing. But it's not good to isolate ourselves. If we go back to Genesis, we learn that God created everything, right? God created the heavens and the earth, and God said it was good. God said, this is good. He made Adam. He said, this is good. He made the animals. This is good. He made all the vegetation. This is good. But in Genesis 2.18, look it up later tonight, he said, something's not good. The fact that Adam is alone is not good. That's the one thing God said, this isn't working out. This is not going well. So what does he do? He creates a partner. He gives Adam some community, right? And so we know that we are designed to not isolate ourselves, but instead be involved in a community. And that's really hard to do when we're looking down at our phone all the time. When we're constantly looking at our phone, that's challenging. Today, I want us to recognize that we got to get face-to-face with our, with our phones face down. We got to get face to face with our phones face down. If we want to live in godly community, if we want to start doing what we have been designed to do, start getting face to face with your phones down. It's how we've been created. You see, last week, Josh kicked us off with an incredible message, and he talked about how social media sells a lie, but God's word tells the truth always. And I was thinking about that this week, and, and I like to create things. Um, I just have like this creative head and this mind, and I just love to like create graphics. I love to create videos. And so like I wanted to create a graphic as if like the digital world was a person, and he got all of the little social platforms together, and he was like, come on, guys, let's have a dream team meeting. Let's, let's, let's try to do something. Let's try to make sure that teenagers and, and adults think everything that we're pushing out is real. Let's make them think the internet and everything on it is real. And a lot of us do believe that. Like, we'll Google something and it's like, fact! That's it! That's the true fact. And so, I created this dream board as if, like, social media was a person, right? Get them to think it's all real, right? And they have four things that I've seen, and I've fallen in this trap all the time. But it's like, let's get them to only post the good moments, right? How often do you scroll on your social platforms and all you see is excellent photos or like perfect situations or like 
she's got the perfect nails or, you know, her eyelashes are beautiful and she's got the perfect body. It's crazy. And like, we're like, oh, bro, those shoes are sick, though. Um, by the way, I got these shoes from Walmart, 20 bucks. Um, moving forward, they want to keep them wanting more, right? How often do we get on our phones and then we put it down and we walk away and then we're like, I wasn't done. I'm going to come back to it. And we just keep going. Like, Social media does this. They do a great job at keeping us wanting more. Think about it. Advertisements constantly are in our face. They, want, they make us want more. We want more product. We want more things. We're not satisfied with what we have. So we keep looking on this magic box and we keep seeing things that we can never probably even achieve. Right? Get them addicted. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to my phone. iPhone has done an incredible job. Apple has done an incredible job of making a solid phone that works for me 100% of the time. That's not true, actually. It sometimes works 100% of the time. Uh, for Josh, it never works. I don't know. I, I'm sorry, Josh, but whatever. And so I, I just love picking this thing up. Like, I constantly do it. If it's down and I'm not even doing anything, typically we all go to what? We go to Instagram when we're not doing anything. When we're waiting in a line, what are we doing? This number. Oh, this is fun. Even though the people are around us, right? And then make them lose sleep over us. I've lost so much sleep over watching Netflix, but I know that's not really the digital social platform world, but I've, I've lost sleep over it. I've lost sleep over scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through Facebook. If you get on Facebook, adults in the room, you know what I'm talking about. You see this funny video of this cute little dog, and then next thing you know, you're watching social injustices, and then next thing you know, you're watching clowns come out of nowhere and go, ah! and you're like, oh my God, right? It's like, what, did, what just happened? How did I get here? And it's like five hours later, and I've wasted my entire day, and my eyes are like, ah. and so like, they're doing a good job. Like, social media, the digital world is nailing this. They, they, this is their dream board that they're... It's, it's happening. And we got to do something about it. We got to do something about it. This week, I want us to keep reading in Ecclesiastes because that's, that's, that's the main passage that we've been looking at. That's the main book we've been looking at in this series. And Ecclesiastes was written by a guy named Solomon. He was the wisest man ever, besides Jesus, right? And if you're the wisest person, then I think I'm going to want to listen to you. Like, I'm going to want to go and hear what you have to say, right? And so I want us to continue reading Ecclesiastes, and I want us to keep this mindset of, like, community and the importance of community. And it, if you're in the room and you're like, I don't really, what do you mean by community, Tucker? Like, there's a TV show about it. There's, I don't really understand. Community is your small group, Okay. Every time I say the word community, imagine that it's your small group, the group that you meet with every Wednesday. It's the people that you're around daily, right? That's your community, okay? We good? Thumbs up? Ready to dive in? Let's check out what Solomon has to say through God's word. Check this out. Ecclesiastes 4, 7 through 12. This is the wisest guy ever, right? I observed yet another example of something meaningless under the sun. This is the case of a man who is all a... What's that word? Alone. Yep. Without a child or a brother, yet who works hard to gain as much wealth as he can. But then he asks himself, who am I working for? Why am I giving up so much pleasure now? It is all so meaningless and depressing. Let's keep going. Two people are better off than one. For they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. <laughs> That's why they made life alert. <laughs> I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> Whoa. Anyways, verse 11, reading the Bible. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? Let's keep reading. Yep. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer, right? Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. How many of you guys use floss? Not me. Um, I can break floss pretty easily. Like, I'm pretty good at snapping it. But if you take three cords of floss, it's a lot harder to snap. Try it tonight. You don't use your floss anyways. I know you don't, so just waste a little. It's going to be okay. But it's so true. I love what, I love, I love what happens here, what we're reading here. And there's 
He gives us four things. Four things and tells us like, hey, community is so key. And here's the four things that, that he points out. Number one, we can help each other succeed. When we're in community, not isolating ourselves, we can help each other succeed. We can become better around other people. They can start holding us accountable. They can make us better. If we're constantly alone, we're going to think we're doing all right. But other people get to see some things that we don't always see because we got these things called blind spots in our life. Sometimes we don't see the bl- what's in the blind spot, but our friends do. And our friends, if they're godly friends, they'll come to you in a humble manner and they'll say, hey, let me tell you about your blind spots. You got some. You ready to hear them? And you'll be like, yeah, I would love to. Thanks, community. Bing. Okay, so number two, right? What else does he tell us? If one falls, they can help the other up. Like I said, life alert's not always going to have batteries running, okay? The batteries will die, but people will hopefully always be around, okay? So make sure you surround yourself even when you're older, okay? Um, Three, two people lying together. This could get a little uh uh-oh for student ministry, but we're fine. We're, we're, We're good. Two people lying together can keep each other warm. This is so true. Like, I love camping, and I love extreme camping, and it feels like every time I go camping, it's always extreme. The weather's like negative two degrees. It's always freezing. There's almost like trees that always fall on, on me, and it's crazy. But I love adventure, right? And some of you guys know Kirk Robertson. He's a good buddy of mine, um, who's about to get married, by the way, and I'm his best man, and I'm super excited. Um, but there's this one time that we were camping, and it was like really, really cold. And we were in a tent. Um... We both love our wives so much, and we love our life, okay? We love our life. And I was like, hey, Kirk. He's like, yeah. Are you awake? Yeah. I'm so cold, bro. (laughs) He's like, I got you. And (laughs) he just like came and just grabbed me, and I was like, oh, thank you so much. Like, because I was about to die, y'all. Like, it was, it was do or die. Like, and, and yeah, it, yep. And so I'll never forget those moments. And so, like, if you don't have community, you'll never have those fun stories to tell, right? Right, so, okay, the fourth thing. Standing back to back, we can conquer. Standing back to back, we can conquer. This is huge. I want us to just, like, get focused right here. If you're not focused at this point, go ahead and get focused. Get seated. Go ahead and get a little comfortable, but not too comfortable where you fall asleep. I want you to get your pens out. I want you to get your pencils out. Get your phones out. Take some notes. But when we're standing back to back, when we're standing with our community, we can conquer the lies that the enemy throws at us. And I think a lot of time the enemy chooses social media, chooses the digital world to throw lies at us constantly. Why? Because it's so easy. We're seeing lies all the time. We're being sold lies all the time. And if we're constantly looking at it, we're constantly, sometimes we start believing those things, right? We start seeing those things. And something I want us to recognize is that, cool, we can be with one another, but he, he, he says that three is even better. When we get around people that care about us and that love us, and we're around more than three people or we're with three people, man, Jesus shows up. And he starts doing something incredible. You start being encouraged by one another. You start encouraging one another. You start challenging one another. You start holding each other accountable. You start getting to a place where it's like, hey, let's be better together. Strain of three is not easily broken. And I've seen some of y'all's friendships, and I've seen some incredible strands. And I've seen where when you guys get together, I'm like, these people are unstoppable. And it's so awesome to watch when you guys get in your communities. And it was so cool at Elevate Weekend to watch you guys love on each other, encourage each other, and champion one another for the kingdom of God. Because it's so easy for us, late at night, to start scrolling through Instagram or wherever you're scrolling through and start sizing up. You know what I mean by sizing up? You start, you start comparing yourself to, to what you see, and all you're seeing are lies. And then typically what happens for me, I start looking at that at night. I'm already really tired. I'm vulnerable. I'm vulnerable. Maybe some of you guys are. I don't, hope I'm not alone in this. I start scrolling through. I'm like, man, I don't have that. 
I don't, I don't have that. I want that. And you start to worry because you're like, I, am I good enough? Do I have enough clothes in my closet? Do, what's, how do I look compared to that person? And you start thinking about that constantly and it starts to devour your mind and you, eventually you're just like, all this anxiety comes over you because you don't feel good enough. All this worry and doubt floods your mind. But I love Jesus. I love Jesus because Jesus has the answer for everything. He really does. And in Matthew, he tells us this. This is Jesus speaking. He said, don't worry about these things. Can you just sit in that just for just a, a, a second? Stop worrying about what other people are posting on social media, right? Saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? What's going to be our next post? What is that person doing on Instagram? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. That's huge. And because he knows them, like, he's going he's gonna to hook you up, Right? Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Jesus just goes straight to the point. He drives it home and he lets us know, hey, tomorrow's got enough issues. Like, or today's got enough issues in itself to let tomorrow worry about itself. Stop worrying about what other people are posting. Stop worrying about what you're seeing constantly because, hey, you know what? I'm here for you. And I'm, I want to be with you. And that's why it's so important for us to get in community. But I want to ask you this question. What is, what's dominating your thoughts? What's dominating your thoughts? What are, are the things that you're constantly thinking about? Because if it's not the kingdom of God, then we're, we're, we're thinking wrongly. And I... I fall in that trap all the time. Sometimes I'm thinking about what's the next thing that I can buy? <laughs> what's the next thing that I can get on Amazon to make myself happy? What's the next post that I can post to make myself feel better about my life? So that other people can like and comment and make me feel good like I, I've got my life all put together. No, 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 no. What is dominating your thoughts? And I want to tell you, if you start getting in a community that is God-centered, they'll help you recognize that, hey, Let's let the kingdom of God be on our mind constantly. Let's bring the kingdom of heaven down here on earth and let's build our community. See, when we get in godly community, when we start to put our phones down and get face to face with one another, community starts happening and it's beautiful. It's authentic. It's genuine. It's something that we all desire and something that we all want. And there's a few things I wrote down that community has helped me. I go, I'm in a, I'm in a small group every Sunday night. Turn up if you're in my small group. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see them hands. Yeah, hold them up. Hold them up high. Yeah, that's my small group. Those are my people. I love you guys. I love them. And when I'm with them, I'm encouraged. Hopefully you have the same feeling, right? I love my small group. I love my people. Community is key for personal growth. I feel like every time I go to small group, I grow just a little bit further. I'm challenged just a little bit more. Community is key for accountability. I love the fact when we get together as, guys, as a group of guys in, our, in my small group and, and, and we pray for one another and we get to talk about the things that I don't really want to talk about with other people besides them, but it makes me better makes me a more godly man, makes me a more godly husband, a godly father to my child, right? Community is key to staying on track. If we're isolating ourselves, we're doing our own thing constantly, and we're running into things. Have you guys seen the videos of people like texting and running into things? Boom! It's bad. It's terrible. It's, it's a little awkward, but stays on track, right? Community is key to living out our purpose. Every single person in this room we want to know what our purpose is. We desire our purpose. We desire a purpose. We want to live out our purpose. And to do that, we got to get in community with one another. So we can't neglect these things. We can't neglect community. We can't neglect encouraging one another. Hebrews puts it this way. Check this out. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together. 
Thank you for being here. You're living out this, 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 this truth right here. As some people do, but encourage, encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Hold this up for just a second, Amelia. Thank you. Have you been motivating your community? Have you been motivating your small group? Have you been motivating the people that have been neglecting to come to your group? I see some empty spaces in this room right now. How are we motivating other people that haven't been coming? Because you know they need it just as much as you need it. How have you been encouraging one another? It's so easy to put each other down and it's almost like this game or it's like funny or something, but it's not. It's not funny. It's not what God has for us. God desires us to live in healthy and godly community and that's constantly encouraging one another. See, here at Scotts Hill, we value discipleship. We value community. And we want to see you grow. We want to watch you grow and develop an authentic relationship with Jesus. And we truly believe that your small group is a key to that. Being among your fellow believers is key to that. And I just want to tell you, we got to put our phones down. We got to get face to face with our phones face down. Let's go back to the egg. I mean, if you, if you look at the egg, if you look at the, the, the why behind it, if you look at the what behind it, if you look at the how behind it, there was a purpose. There's a purpose to community. If you look at the how, people invited other people. I want to sit on this just for one more second. Who are you inviting? Who is the one person that you're going after and you're saying, hey, we think you need to be here because number one, on Wednesday nights, we're getting truth. God's word is getting spoken over our lives. Number two, we're getting encouraged. Number three, we're playing fun games. Like it's fun. We're having a good time. But there are other people that need this kind of community because we're not seeing this in this world. This is not normal. What you're doing right now is not normal. It's so counterculture. What is normal is getting on your phone and, and, and maybe FaceTiming, which is like not really face-to-face, but it is. But we're constantly sizing up. We're looking at other people. No, no, no. What we're doing is beautiful. This is what God desires us to do. So thank you for being here. You want to be a part of something bigger than yourself? Keep coming. And start inviting other people into the kingdom of God. And watch not only your life be transformed, but other people's as well. I don't want to keep what's here, here. I want this to go out of these walls. I want the gospel. I want you guys to be the hands and feet of Jesus. I believe you guys can make big moves. But to do that, you have to desire godly community. And godly community happens when we get face to face with our phones face down. So I want to encourage you to invite people into your life so that they see how cool you are because you're pretty cool. You're pretty awesome. You matter. And then maybe take it a step further. Hey, you should come with me to small group. It's an amazing place because we encourage one another. We lift each other up. And, and we get to worship a God that deserves our love and our worship and our adoration. You should come and just check it out. Invite other people in. Build your community. That's God's desire for our lives. Let's pray together.